Tonight, I'm taking the Nikon Z8 to its limits, capturing mind-blowing images of the stars to see if this camera truly lives up to the hype for astrophotography. We're talking 45.7 megapixels of star-catching power, a sensor that pulls in light like never before, and extended shutter speeds that can capture every last detail of the Milky Way. But here's the real question, is it worth the price? And does it really work for night sky lovers, or is it better left to sports and wildlife photographers? Stay tuned because I'm breaking down key specs showing you what I love, what I don't, and exactly who this camera is for. This is the Nikon Z8 like you've never seen it before. Let's dive into the key specs of the Nikon Z8 that make it such a powerful tool for astrophotography. Starting with the price, it retails at $3,800 just for the body. Now this is definitely an investment, but Nikon has packed a ton of astro-friendly features into this camera. The Z8 comes with a 45.7 megapixel sensor, which is great for capturing tons of detail. When you're shooting something like the Milky Way, that extra resolution means that you can zoom in without losing quality. And this isn't just any sensor, it's a full frame stacked CMOS sensor. That full frame format is ideal for night shots, capturing more light and minimizing noise so those faint stars come out crisp and clear. Next, the camera size and weight. The Z8 weighs around 910 grams, so that's just over two pounds. It's compact for a high res full frame camera, but it's still got enough heft to feel solid and balanced in your hand, especially with a good wide-angle lens. For Astro, this is nice because it's portable without compromising on quality. The ISO sensitivity range is also excellent for low-light work. You can go up to ISO 64 all the way to 25,600 natively with the option to expand the ISO to 102,000. This flexibility lets you push your settings for those darker skies without introducing too much noise. And when it comes to shutter type, the Z8 uses electronic shutters, allowing exposures up to 900 seconds without any additional gear, which is fantastic for star trails and ultra long exposures. The monitor is a big help too. You get a 3.2 inch tilting touchscreen so you can easily frame shots from low angles or check your settings in real time. For night work, the brightness and resolution make a big difference in seeing exactly what you're capturing, even in the dark. And if you're into time lapses, the Z8's remote interface is awesome. You can use the built-in interval timer or connect with an external remote if you're going for extended shots. It's convenient and gives you a lot of control over your shooting process. If you're thinking about grabbing the Nikon Z8, I'd really appreciate it if you use my affiliate links down below. It's a simple way to support the channel and helps me keep making content like this. And hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more camera reviews and astrophotography tips. Thanks so much. Now let's get into what I love about the Nikon Z8 for astrophotography. When it comes to shooting the night sky, this camera has some serious advantages to make it one of the best choices out there. First up is the low light performance. The Z8's backside illuminated full frame sensor does a fantastic job pulling in light even in the darkest conditions. Shooting at high ISO settings gives me clean, sharp stars without introducing a ton of noise which is crucial for capturing those faint stars and nebula. When you're in a remote area with just the Milky Way overhead, you really see how well it performs. Another big plus for me is the extended shutter settings. The Z8 allows you to shoot up to 900 seconds or 15 minutes with no extra accessories. That's a game changer for Ash especially when I want to capture long star trails or deep sky objects. Just set it up and you're good to go. And if you're a fan of time lapses, you'll love the built-in interval timer shooting. No external intervalometer needed, just set your intervals and the Z8 takes care of the rest. This makes it super easy to capture the stars moving across the sky without extra gear. Then there's the Z-mount and full-frame sensor combo, which is perfect for Astro. The Z-mount's large diameter means better light gathering, which pairs so well with a full-frame sensor. You're getting an image quality that truly captures the richness of the night sky. Additionally, when you're working in the dark, the button illumination is key for knowing where all of your buttons are on the camera. The USB-C charging option is another favorite of mine. When you're out for hours, sometimes in cold weather, being able to extend the battery life with a power bank is huge. I don't have to worry about running out of power mid-shoot, which gives me one less thing to stress out about. Finally, the megapixel count. The 45.7 megapixels gives me a lot of flexibility in post-processing. You can crop in without losing detail, which is great if you're framing a shot after the fact or want to focus on a particular part of the sky. All in all, with its low light performance, extended shutter options, built-in interval timer, high resolution full frame sensor, and USB-C charging, the Z8 really shines for astrophotography. This camera gives you the tools to get incredible shots of the night sky with ease. 
So those are the reasons I love using the Z8 for astrophotography. If you're serious about capturing the stars, this camera's got everything you need to make it happen. So I've covered all the things I love about the Nikon Z8 for astrophotography, but now it's time to talk about a few areas where it could be better. Every camera has its downsides and the Z8 is no exception to that. First up is battery life. Long exposures, time lapses, and cold weather all drain the battery fast. So when you're shooting all night, this can be an issue. I always have extra batteries, but it does add bulk to the kit, and Nikon's USB-C charging helps extend life, but I still find myself wishing the Z8 lasted longer on a single charge. If you're going with the Z8 for astrophotography, I definitely recommend picking up one of these Anchor Power Core external battery packs. Next, let's talk about the weight and the size. The Z8 isn't huge, but at just over two pounds with out of lens, it's still noticeable when you're carrying it on a long hike to a remote location. Add a sturdy lens and a tripod and you're looking at a hefty setup that starts to feel heavy after a few hours. It's not a deal breaker, but something to think about if you're on the move. And then of course there's the price. At around $4,000, the Z8 is a big investment. For the performance and features, it's worth it, but this isn't exactly an entry-level camera. Plus, to get the best results for astrophotography, you'll want a high-quality lens, which can add even more to the overall cost. And lastly, the file size. With the 45.7 megapixel sensor, you get amazing detail, but those files are big. We're talking raw files that can be upwards of 50 to 60 megabytes each. Over a night shoot, you can easily fill up memory cards and slow down your workflow when editing. You need high capacity storage to handle it all. And if you're shooting a lot, it can feel overwhelming. So a quick recap, the battery life can be limiting on long shoots, the weight and size can add up on hikes, and the price makes it a big investment. The file sizes require a lot of storage and power in your editing setup. But honestly, even with these downsides, the Z8 still gives me the performance I need to get incredible shots of the night sky. It's not perfect, but the results make these trade-offs more than worth it. So let's switch gears here and take a look at some of the night photos that I've taken with the Z8. So first off over here, let's take a look at this photo of the moon. And in this photo, I think this is a great one just to highlight how much you can crop into a photo. So we're sitting here zoomed out and we'll go ahead and zoom into 100%. And you can already see here just how much detail there is, how clear the plane that's in front of the moon is showing up and all the detail that you're seeing in the moon. So this is just at 100%. Uh, we don't even need to go much further, I think, to be able to show how much that megapixel count can help you out. Moving on to the next photo, this is going to be a photo of the comet that was visible back in September and October. I was actually really lucky and got the chance to take this photo off the side of Mauna Kea back in September. Uh, but you can zoom in here, you can see the stars, a lot of detail in there. You can definitely see some color noise going on in here. I don't believe this photo has been cleaned up, uh, but that would definitely go away with some noise reduction. So not a big issue there. And of course, let's take a look. I mean, the detail, this is a single image of the comet and it just came out incredibly. So moving on, this is another image from Hawaii. This is actually a two photo composite. I've got one image that's actually about 10 images that are stacked to get the stars and the clouds up here. And then the other one, this is gonna be a really long exposure here to bring out the detail in the foreground and in the rocks. So uh, since we're looking at stars, um, again, really good pretty clean in here and um, this one I actually did run noise reduction on I think it looks great moving to this next one this is another photo from the side of Mauna Kea uh, this is actually a single image that I have not edited so just to give you an idea of what it looks like before processing so they're pretty grainy I mean this is ISO 10,000 at f2.8 and a 15 second exposure uh, but this actually cleans up really nicely once you do some stacking with it and also cleaning up the noise in it Moving to the next one, this is a fully processed image again of the comet from back in October. This was shot here in Texas. And you can see looking up in here in the stars, uh, these are, you know, good stars on here. A lot of detail in the comet, even though this was getting late in the cycle for being able to see it. Um, again, long exposure on the foreground. I believe this one was about four minutes. And this guy was shot at about 15 seconds. Combining those two images, cleaning them all up, um, they both came out great. Definitely something that you could go off and print. Moving on to the next three, this is actually out at the same church, and believe it or not, this is about an hour west of Fort Worth. This is actually the Northern Lights from the event that happened in October. So another photo here that shows the capability of the Z8. Again, really crazy that this was visible here. I could actually see it with my eye whenever I was out shooting. A lot of detail here in the stars. 
um, having to be careful actually to make sure I didn't blow out the northern lights in this image. A lot of detail down here in the foreground. This one's definitely been cleaned up. I probably could have done a better job here. Uh, it actually kind of looks funky, but it was actually really windy that night. And this grass was about three feet tall. So um, this is a lot of just the movement in the grass and not actually artifacts coming from the noise reduction. Next image here, this is the SAR arc. So when the northern lights weren't going on, this was actually visible in the camera. I couldn't see this with my eyes, but something that the Z8 was able to pick up. And you'll see, you know, the large file size here, you'll get that loading whenever you try to zoom in. But again, great looking image here. Another one here with the SAR art. Even these flowers here are visible. You can kind of get an idea here for how much the grass was moving. But great image overall. Moving to the next one, just for a comparison, this is a photo from the Nikon Z6 that I used. Again, you don't really lose a lot of detail. They're both pretty comparable. I've always really liked the Z6. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you've probably picked up on that. So just going from comparison from a Z8 night image over to a Z6 night image, you're definitely getting a good camera for nightscapes. So I hope this helps you in choosing if you're trying to get a Nikon Z8 for shooting nightscapes or astrophotography. So who is the Nikon Z8 perfect for? Well, if you're someone who needs high resolution images, think 45.7 megapixels, you'll love this camera. Those larger file sizes mean you get incredible detail, which is ideal if you're cropping in or printing your shots in large formats. Plus, that resolution brings out the stars when you're shooting the night sky. This camera also doubles as a speed machine. With up to 20 frames per second in RAW at 45.7 megapixels, it's awesome for things like wildlife and sports photography. So if you want a camera that can handle both the quiet, detailed world of astrophotography and the fast-paced action of sports, the Z8 has you covered. Now, if you're okay with a slightly bulkier build at about 2 pounds without a lens, you'll appreciate the sturdiness. It's not the lightest, but that durability and solid grip give you confidence in rugged conditions. So if you're also after high resolution, speed, and don't mind a bit of the heft, the Nikon Z8 might just be the perfect fit. If you're as excited about the night sky photography as I am and want to see exactly how I captured an epic shot of the Milky Way using this camera, you'll definitely want to check out this video right here. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe for more in-depth camera guides and tips, and I'll catch you in the next one.